Hi, everybody. So, uh, yeah, uh, I've been working in, you know, data warehousing, big data, this type of field for more than 15 years. And um, uh, when we talk about OLAP, you know, people have a lot of, um, you know, different experience and things like that. But when I joined eBay in 2004, uh, we got a whole data warehouse of 30 terabytes and it was already huge, right? At that moment, but now that that's nothing, and people talk about data in petabytes, and with all this new data, we need new tools, new technology, new architecture, and that's where we created Kylie. So, uh, what is Apache Kylie? Uh, the the name is from uh, an Asian, you know, uh, imaginary kind of animal, which means something good, uh, good luck, and uh, it uh, we we're, we're part of you know, uh, Apache Foundation. And uh, this project is the top level project in Apache Kylin. Uh And we're the leader of the OLAP on Hadoop. And the uh, Apache Kylin won two year in a row the best open source big data tool uh, from InfoWorld. And where does it fit in? Uh, because, you know, with the new big data technologies, uh, there are the whole ecosystem. There are a lot of different technologies, different components playing different roles. And Apache Kylin tried to fit in in the middle between Hadoop ecosystem and all the BI, data visualization, all these kind of applications of data. So why do we need that middle layer? Um, because like previously, we had uh, RDBMS uh, to store our data warehousing data, like Teradata, or some people use uh, MySQL or SQL Server um, or Oracle. And then later on, we have big data technologies. People all got their own Hadoop clusters. They have much more data. Uh, it uh, make a lot of things uh, previously impossible, now possible, right? You have a lot more variety of data, huge volume of data, and now you can do a lot more analysis on top of those. But at the same time, it creates new challenge for all the organizations that now adopt this newer technology because uh, the data, you can, you can start it there, but how to get it out, how to still find the insight that you want to have, uh, it become more and more difficult. You need engineers who knows how to program to write the query, to uh, process the data, to get the insight out of that system for you. I remember at the beginning when there was uh, the, the NoSQL thing and people got very excited, especially engineering community, they got very excited. And, uh, uh, but, Later on, people say it's not no SQL, it's not only SQL because people still need SQL. And then later on, there's new SQL. So uh, I think a SQL interface is already something that um, has a lot of investment and a lot of people are used to that, especially uh, business users. And how to preserve that kind of investment, how to really still maintain the user friendliness of the big data technology is also a big challenge. So Apache Kaling in the middle uh, as an OLAP engine, it does several things. One thing is it simplifies uh, how you access the data. The data will be, in, uh, in, be more democratized and people can easily access it through different um, uh, BI tools and SQL and even Excel. On the other side, uh, a lot of times with huge data, um, uh, data volume and the big data set, uh, a, a lot of this kind of processing and query become more like a batch process. You cannot really interact with a hive table that easily. You normally will throw a query and then wait a while and get the result. But with Kylegence, it accelerates this kind of interactive queries. It enables the business users to uh, simply just use SQL to interact with the data set and get the result back in sub, sub seconds on top of like trillions of rows. That's what uh, Kylin can do in the middle. And that's why it finds its uh, value propositions in the whole ecosystem. And you can see some of the cases, all these cases are based on open source Apache Kaling. 
because I'm from Kylogens. That's the company that uh, make the commercial version of that and enhance it. But for the open source version, it already got a lot of adoptions, over thousands of uh, uh, users across the globe using the open source version. Uh, one of them is uh, ByteDance, is a top one news app in China. And in one of their cube, one data cube, one OLAP cube, they have three trillion rows. And uh, you can still get sub-second kind of query latency, um, maybe 90 percent of the time. And for uh, some Fortune 500 companies, they also use that. And for some of the um, companies like uh, Yahoo Japan, they even use it to support their uh, website. We'll see a little bit more detail later. And on top of that, they inter integrate with all the BI tools, so it become more like an open platform. You don't need a special query engine or query language like Druid. Uh, it has its own you know, uh, JSON format kind of query to get the data out. It just support NCC core, and you can even do joins between your fact and some of the dimension tables. So um, a little bit of the history. It was created in 2013 by China Development Center in China, uh, eBay's Development Center in China. And uh, later on, it became a top level uh, Apache project. It's uh, actively uh, maintained. And our company has a dedicated team to maintain the open source version. Uh, currently, the version is 2.4, and we're working on the 2.5. And as I mentioned, globally, there are a lot of adopters, um, both um, uh, some maybe uh, department uh, for some use cases. Some are actually the whole company has some of their business based on Kylin. And Apache Kylin, the high level uh, architecture, uh, you can see that it fits in the middle. It has data source from um, both Hive and Kafka, and it will push down the its cubing processing to your Hadoop cluster or Spark. And uh, our roadmap actually will later on be wholly um, Spark based and will uh, gradually re uh, phase out uh, MapReduce. And on the other side, we support NCC core and all your BI tools and web application can just use the simple uh, SQL interface to interact with the data set in Kylin. The open source version use Edgebase as its own storage and um, to, to provide uh, the, the query performance and other things people need. Uh, our uh, commercial version has our own proprietary kind of storage to um, make it even better. So in the middle, uh, uh, Kylin just sit there and uh, you, you also have your batch job or continuous incremental load uh, to process your raw data and put your data into Kylin. It's more like, a, I think this, yeah, it's still working. Okay. And, and then build its cube. It's more like a, a materialized view. Uh, you uh, join all your uh, data together and then put into your, um, you can call it more like a huge uh, multi dimensional table or a cube. And then uh, Kylin will serve that to your application. Some of the use cases. Uh, the first one, uh, as I mentioned, is in ByteDance. Uh, it has over 600 million users. Uh, it's a, a, the, the top one newsfeed app in China. And for their user scenarios, the first one is uh, their video impression data. Uh, they they, they uh, sell their um, ads also through that. And the cube by itself, the single cube can be more than like four terabytes. For the traditional kind of cubing technologies like Cognos or SSAS, this kind of uh, uh, size is not possible. And that's also why um, we call it extreme OLAP, because it, it, it based on the distributed kind of architecture, it can linearly grow. And uh, theoretically, it can uh, support even more of the data size in just one single cube. Uh, this one single cube uh, kind of uh, uh, implementation is also very interesting because when we talk to our clients, a lot of people, they actually have a, a Cognos implementation or something like that. And they have hundreds or thousands of cubes. 
normally it works in this way. Some people create the cube and then start to support some report. And then later on, uh, another requirement comes in with slightly different requirement. Maybe they need to add one dimension or has some different filters or a slightly different calculation of some derived metrics. And then people create another cube and then another cube. And after several hundred, people lost track of those. And when there's a new requirement, instead of you know bothering to, to uh, get the existing one modified, people normally will just create another job. So finally, it becomes more unmanageable, right? With thousands of cubes and uh, a, a lot of maintenance jobs, daily badges, hourly badges. In some of our cases, the user even cannot have one day worth of data processing one day. So they need to wait like T, T plus two, and then they have a monthly job to catch up. So all these things happen, uh, but with Kyling, uh, you can have a single kind of big cube, and then inside it, it actually has layers of different aggregations. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, in this way, you actually reduce your maintenance effort. In one of our clients, they actually reduce the whole maintenance team from 10 to 1 because they don't need to maintain thousands of cubes anymore. You just need one people to monitor Kyling jobs uh, to build a couple cubes. And then they support uh, the internal kind of queries with a sub-second of uh, latency, as you can see all these different um, um, numbers. The second one is Yahoo Japan. Um, this is also a very interesting thing. And uh, from my perspective in the data field, uh, you, you, uh, if you work in this kind of uh, team, normally I think one of the challenges, you're always a back office kind of team. And the, the business team, they have their OLTP system, they develop their own model, they meet their own need without thinking about data analytics. And then your analysis, your functions finally only become a reporting system. But I think for the data team to really become a mission critical team to really embed it into the business, your data product needs to enable the business, needs to be embedded into the business. That's how you finally uh, become a mission critical team that cannot be replaced. And in this way, uh, I think here is also one, one thing that uh, for for reporting um, kind of un, uh, use cases, especially internally, people has higher tolerance, and maybe someday when it's done for a couple hours, it's still okay. But uh, for client facing or user facing kind of features, the the tolerance is much lower. So you need something more reliable. And for Kylin, actually, it can support such use cases. Uh, for this one is uh, uh, Yahoo Japan is actually the biggest uh, kind of auction site in Japan. Mm, eBay lost that battle <laughs> in Japan. And um, for them, they produce seller reporting, seller dashboard for their users when they log into their uh, storefront on Yahoo Japan. And uh, all these kind of aggregations actually uh, already uh, stored in Kylin and then serve the website. Previously, it took them a long time, about a minute to load the, their uh, web UI because the data query at the back end is slow, but now it's more like real time. And in China, we have another use case with the commercial version that the uh, construction bank, that's one of the biggest bank in China, and they have an app for their uh, high value users to uh, to use their phone to check a lot of their bills and things like that. They have hundreds of thousands of users and they actually query those kind of aggregation data of individual users from Kylin Cube. Because Kylin Cube can be huge, user ID can be a dimension in it. And then you can have a very detailed level kind of uh, aggregation inside the cube. And then the third one is uh, uh, a company also um, in China. Uh, it's a top one O2O company um, because that market has so many users. So normally, once you have a very good business, you have a much bigger uh, use use popula user population than any other country. So it requires a lot more big data kind of technology to really support their use cases. So for for this one, they use uh, their uh, their whole internal OLAP uh, analysis for their business analysts 
are fully on uh, Kylin, and then the it, it's their core OLAP engine. They have hundreds of cubes for different business lines, different you know departments, and support many queries per day. And you can see that uh, half of their queries can be done in sub-second, and um, also, uh, 99% can still be done in a very um, real-time, very interactive way. So uh, here is a comparison of the query performance. On the left side, you can even cannot notice those green bars. Those green bars are the Kylin's response time, or uh, Kylin's uh, latency. And then it's compa uh, compared to Hive queries. And uh, with the data size, actually, it won't grow much because uh, a lot of things has been pre-calculated. And, and it, it, it provides this kind of uh, pre-calculation, uh, pre-aggregation, so that your query can be accelerated uh, in a much faster way, sometimes even tens of thousands of times. So you can see that on the left side, uh, our normal way of doing this kind of query through um, to, to your original data source or original data storage will be you find the tables, you join them, you apply uh, uh, filters on top of that, you, you have aggregations. And now a lot of those steps already being done uh, before user query the data. And then there's a so-called cuboid that's pre-calculated to, to support your, your query. And the query, when it hits Kylin first, Kylin actually can automatically see if this query can be supported by a cube or not, and then reroute some of those queries to your base source if it cannot be supported. And then later on, it, you, you can you know, improve your model to include more um, dimensions or more metrics that your users normally use. So pre-calculation is the key. Uh, um, data cube or you know multi-dimensional is not a new kind of concept, right? We just implemented on the newer big data technology and make it more distributed, um, and more linearly uh, scalable, and also um, much faster. So here we have uh, something called cuboid. Um, for the as I mentioned, you can have a huge um, cube in Kylin, and at the base is actually uh, the, the combination of all the dimensions that you need. And then on top of that, we actually uh, choose subset of dimensions that you can build another layer of aggregation, uh, aggregation on top of aggregation. In this way, uh, a lot of your queries will not hit the base. It will just hit some of the higher level aggregation so that your queries actually will be much faster. Because uh, in some other technologies, or you use uh, RDBMS or whatever, uh, if you build such uh, uh, fine granular kind of uh, aggregation, uh, you need to balance that, right? Your query sometimes will hit this, but if it got too detailed, too fine granular, the data size can be even bigger than the raw. So um, that's why with this kind of layer, with this cuboid kind of concept, you can actually have some um, more customized, more uh, you know, cut, tailored kind of aggregation to meet your need. You don't need to build all the combinations of those dimensions, only those that you or your uh, user will use 80% of the time. And for the rest, they can still uh, use the most fine granular one to still get their result. And you can see that based on that, uh, Apache Kylin's uh, query performance won't um, deteriorate uh, with the size of the data. And another very interesting thing is that you always uh, have more data. You always have more dimensions. You always have some ad hoc queries. You always have something that cannot be predefined. And in that uh, kind of cases, you don't want your user to really know where is the data and then go to different sources to find uh, your your data asset and then query it. You can actually load all your data schemas into Kylin and then build a partial cube for your 80% of the use cases. 
and for the for the rest, maybe ten or twenty percent, your user or the unexpected ones, your user issue the query, and then it will actually reroute that to your base Hadoop clusters, and then find the Hive table and then get the result there. The performance, of course, will not be that good, but at least it's a single point of entry for your queries and you can get the results still through Kylie. And all this is actually done by the SQL interface. So that's another thing that Kylie can help. And it's only introduced after 2.1 version. And for Kylie, it actually has a very active releasing. As I mentioned, the company, we maintain a, a dedicated team to contribute back to the uh, open source version. And the open source community also has other players like eBay uh, contribute to the uh, project. And now we're working on the 2.5 version. And as I also mentioned, the roadmap will be going towards fully uh, Spark enabled. And the community uh, has uh, it has been also quite active, but we do want to see more and more involvement, especially uh, in North America. And um, our uh, currently we have uh, our you know um, email list, but uh, later on we'll uh, try to maintain a better uh, forum online. And uh, I think uh, Stack Overflow already have a tag for Apache Kylie, and you can tag your questions. And if you want to try it, you can download from our uh, website and uh, give it a try. So here's the other information that you have. Uh, you can have the Apache Kylie has its own Apache uh, website, kylie.apache.org. Uh, that's where you can get your latest uh, release and uh, mailing list and other materials that you need. And for uh, our commercial version that includes intelligence, building the um, modeling or uh, consume your query logs and things like that, there's a kylegence.io. And yeah, that's, that's about the, the introduction. And as I also mentioned to our uh, host that this is the first time that we introduce this uh, in such a setting. And if people are interested, we can have our friends in uh, eBay and other companies to share more detailed implementations of how they do it, uh, what kind of use cases they support, what's the performance acceleration they can get, things like that, right? And any questions? For some technical, I, I know a lot of you uh, engineers for some very technical questions, we have our solution architect here also can help. What, what's the approximate size of the HBase uh, database uh, for, for average cubing, right? Like, uh, obviously, you're pre-calculating a bunch of stuff, mm -hmm. and that can explode in a very major way. So right. how big do you see these on average being? Um, they, they are big and small. As I mentioned, the biggest one actually has uh, uh, four terabytes in in one cube, and that that's all stored on uh, edge base. But for others, I, I think maybe you guys have. This is actually measured from the extension weight. So for example, your source data could be one terabyte, and your. Uh, by the way, I'm from eBay. Uh, we use it uh, every day for our internal reporting uh, uh, dashboard. So uh, the the question is about the the expansion rate of the cube uh, from right. the source data, right? Yeah. Some cases we do see it's actually, um, if you don't tune any uh, modeling, it will ex uh, Just explode. Mind. It's yeah, like yeah. 10 times yeah. larger than the uh, source data. But once you uh, tune it, and um, sometimes it's maybe 10% or 20% because it's a uh, aggregate. It's, it mostly depends on your um, most of fine granular dimension. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what about cloud support? Uh, well, the commercial version has cloud and it's also on Google Cloud and Azure and AWS. Yeah. yeah because uh, Snowflake, uh, Snowflake uh, is one more company which is providing uh -huh. data warehouse on cloud. So how do you compare? Uh, against Snowflake? 
we don't do such comparison, uh, but yes, there are similar technologies. I think uh, the commercial version, uh, the 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 goal is more ambitious. It's more like we want to be the single layer for all your data assets, um, either on premises or cloud, or in your traditional RDBMS based. Uh, data warehousing or your newer Hadoop kind of clusters. So all these things, we have a single entry and uh, we have uh, the single unified semantic layer and we build cubes to accelerate 80% of your queries and for the rest, we handle it automatically for you to reroute the queries. And based on your query, we actually now have a augment, uh, AI augmented kind of uh, modeling to help you to build your cube. And then users query become different and then it learns from it, from the query logs and other behaviors, and then recommend the change to your cube modeling and then build it from there. Yeah. And the, the cloud version, you can uh, actually have a trial. Uh, we, we have trial license also. Yeah. Hi. Uh, yeah. Good talk, by the way. Thank you. So, um, in your experience and based on the Kylene query loads, whether it's for building the cubes or for the lookups, mm -hmm. how much performance difference have you observed between, let's say, a MapReduce versus a Spark? I know you're sort of all moving to Spark, so I'm just curious about how much is the difference in I heard it's two or three times better. Yeah, that's our, Spark. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, actually, a couple of questions. So first mm -hmm. one is, uh, you talk about like basically the query performance, right? Which right. is pretty impressive. And yeah. the, in terms of the loading data, mm -hmm. so what is the loading uh, performance? Because you mentioned, for example, I think at the beginning of the slides, basically you can have uh, maybe two types of the sources, right? For example, one from Hive, the other from uh, Kafka. Yeah. So uh, you know when it's, when they load the data, so usually you know when the big data that it gets uh, kind of like a bigger, is it like the loading time will be linear in terms of the data size? So uh, the initial load, of course, will be a huge amount of data. And okay. then after that, it actually also used the incremental load kind of mechanisms. And it has its own segments. Okay. And then while you are loading some, something new, it actually build a, a new smaller segment. And then later on, once it's built, it merged with some existing ones and then uh, keep growing and then become older. I see. Yeah. I see. So uh, a lot of this kind of, uh, um, you know, optimization is built in into the architecture. I but see. for more details, I think our friends yeah. can. One thing I can add, so there's a, you asked about the, is the loading time will be linear. Uh, of the of the yeah, so I think the build engine is kind of scale. So for example, for your one terabyte source data, you load it for one hour, one petabyte won't be uh, a thousand times. <laughs> it will be linear scale if you uh, uh, provision more resource to build it, uh, to join the build, right? Yeah. So uh, another quick question is that basically it looks like, uh, you know, there are other kind of like similar technologies out there. For example, like a, like a Druid is another yeah. technology that people yeah. use for this yeah. kind of uh, use cases, right? Yeah. Could you do any comparison? Uh, yeah, internally, I think we did some comparison, uh, but uh, I don't use that comparison. I use my own experience. In my past company, I used Druid for three years, actually. And in another team of my company, they also use uh, Kylin for a POC. So uh, I think the difference is uh, Druid is very good in uh, the data that's time series, right? Because my previous company, th that use case was about game events. And then later on about um, marketing, you know, mobile marketing clicks and installs this kind of streaming kind of data. It never changed and it always just generated in real time and then loaded. So for, for such use cases, uh, Druid is a perfect solution. I really liked it and our platform really uh, worked very well. But for to, to make it more like a enterprise level uh, OLAP engine, I think it missed some of those things. And uh, because later on when we had another use case that needs the so-called cohort analysis, which means like for, for today, all these users that install this game, I need to monitor their progress. I need to monitor their behaviors. Then the, 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 
primary key or call or whatever becomes that cohort date, not the timestamp of all these events. Later on, they do this, do that, they buy this, they fight with another player. All these things, it, 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 you, you can have more like what's going on kind of analysis with Druid. But with any cohort analysis, it's very awkward to use it. And uh, we actually did a lot of things to enhance that, to even create a new column. And we have a deep integration with uh, SuperSat because SuperSat used Druid. And then SuperSat, we even have a m more uh, time dimension kind of thing to, to use that pseudo time series. But it's very awkward to, to, to use. And it has its own limitation. Yeah. And I think uh, previously Druid only supports the the hyperlog log kind of uh, uh, count distinct, and you cannot choose the the precision that you want. And uh, Kylin, I think it actually had the drop down. I saw it somewhere that you can choose to be more precise or less precise, or even do just the precise one without edge. Oh, okay. Cool. Any more questions? Okay, I think we can wrap up. Great, thank you.